In software testing, there is a concept called uh, test coverage matrix. Is something which measures the amount of testing executed. This also gives information about the covered and uncovered areas in testing. The percentage of coverage is number of test areas covered by total number of test areas into 100. And we should also note that 100% coverage does not mean that it's 100% tested. Now, why do we need a test coverage matrix? We can find out about the areas which were mentioned in the requirement documentation, but they were not covered in the test cases. It also helps us to take decision about quality of the product. If a lot of test cases are left out, then it's obviously a bad product. We can say it's the only way to measure the extent to which a set of test cases is covered in a program. There are a lot of approaches in our test coverage metrics. I'll be talking about the two main approaches. The first one is program graph based coverage metrics. A program graph is a graphical representation of a program containing the fragment or the statements as uh, notes. Under program graph based metrics, there are a few notations. The first one is G node. It represents node coverage. As I told already, node represents a statement fragment. So G node is concerned with covering those statement fragments. The next one is G edge. It stands for edge coverage. Now we can see in this diagram there are two edges. This represents an if else statement. If the answer is true, it goes here. If it not then it goes here so there are two edges there are two possibilities so G edge is concerned with covering all the edges the next one is G chain if two or more nodes is uh, linearly arranged one after the other that is considered as a chain so a chain length of greater than two is traversed in this matrix next one is G path coverage every path from source to sink is traversed not even a single loop is left out. But the limitation is loops themselves. Because loops are strongly connected nodes. Every loop has to be traversed as an acyclic graph. That was about program graph based. Now we have the next approach. It's called EF Miller's coverage metrics. This one is more organized than the previous one. It's told that organized view of the extent to which a program is tested makes it possible to sensibly manage the testing process. It's also noted that when DD path coverage is attained by a set of test cases, roughly 80% of the faults are revealed. In EF Miller's coverage metrics the nodes are full statements, mainly concentrated about what to test rather than how to test. Let's see the Miller's test coverage metrics one by one. The first one is C0 or C0. This stands for statement testing. You can relate it to the G node of a program graph based testing. C0 matrix is the minimum and it's mandated by ANSI. As I told, it's similar to G node where every node is traversed and tested. So we can tell that there is a gap in the test coverage if some statements are not executed at all. The next one is C1. It represents DD path testing. You can compare this with the G chain of the previous approach. Here it checks if the each predicate outcome has been executed. Every edge in the DD path is traversed here. And the next one is C1P. This stands for every predicate. If there is a branching statement like if then else, then every edge true and false, both are tested. It is also called as predicate outcome, stating that every outcome of a decision or a predicate must be traversed. This you can compare with the G edge of the previous approach. The next one is C2. This is a combination of C1 that is DD path testing plus loop testing. 
this also can be compared with the g edge because it includes the loop you can compare it with g edge also loop testing includes two points one is to traverse the loop and the next one is to terminate and exit the loop fifth one is cd it is a combination of c1 and dependent pair now what is a dependent pair dependent pair means the variables defined in the in one dd path is referencing to the other in this example you can see at b you are checking if it's a triangle if true then you are going to c if not then you are going to d then after some stages at f you are checking if it's a triangle and then if it's true only then you are going to h else you are going to g now here c and h become the dependent pair because for it to be a triangle both the cases has to be true and tell that d and h are infeasible because they represent two different conditions one is false over here and other is true next one is cik this represents complex loop coverage this is an extension of loop coverage matrix but it has the full path containing loops loops are highly fault prone portions in complex loop there are three categories one is concatenated or disjoint sequence second one is nested one loop inside the other the third one is horrible or knotted loops here the branching is so complicated that it looks as though it's knotted things that are worth mentioning are condensing the loop as a single node and the next one is nested traversal can be started from the innermost to the outer ones the knotted then uh, certain data flow methods have to be carried out because do not appear in the structured programming languages seventh one is cmcc it stands for multiple condition coverage uh, as the name tells multiple conditions have to be traversed before coming to a conclusion the eighth one is c stat this represents statistically significant data this is a bit tricky because what constitutes the statistics is subjective c infinite the infinity represents all possible paths it makes sense for program having trillions of loops